Greetings and welcome to the Archie Ellidge Wastewater Treatment Plant operated by the Utilities Division of the City of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I'm Bob McManon. I'm a senior plant operator here at the Ellidge Wastewater Treatment Plant and I'd like to show you around, so come on, let's go look. Let's talk about wastewater. What is wastewater? Well, think about brushing your teeth. We brush our teeth to get out of our teeth unwanted debris. We use toothpaste. When we get done, we rinse our mouth. We rinse the toothbrush. We rinse the sink. All of that is carried by the water to the waste treatment plant. That is wastewater. Wastewater carries away waste generated by washing our bodies, our hair, washing our dishes, washing our clothes. All that goes down the drains. Here in Forsyth County, all of that wastewater goes to one of two different treatment plants, either here at the Ellidge plant or the Muddy Creek wastewater treatment plant. Those two plants are able to treat 51 million gallons of water a day. So how much is 51 million gallons a day? Well, think about it. A tank the size of a football field, 160 foot wide, 300 foot long, would have to be 15 stories deep to hold 51 million gallons. That is how much wastewater we treat at the two treatment plants every day. Now that wastewater comes from the households. Each individual will generate about 125 gallons of wastewater each day. All of that comes to the plant via our 1,800 miles of wastewater lines and interceptors. The first process water goes through at the treatment plant is called a bar screen. The bar screen actually has a set of bars erected in the flow the bars trap solids. The solids that those bars collect will be rags, sticks, stones, nuts, bolts, rocks, anything that comes into the flow into the plant that's larger than a quarter inch. The bar screen rake, which you see moving, will clear the bar screen periodically to remove those solids from the flow coming through the treatment plant. We see some interesting things come through the bar screen. Every now and then you may find a piece of jewelry or you may see a deceased rodent, a snake. See anything that comes through the plant that's larger than a quarter inch is trapped by the bar screen. The water that comes through the bar screen is this product. This is raw wastewater. And if you'll notice in the bottom of the beaker, there's a lot of solids that are falling out. Those solids that fall out quickly are called grit. The next process the flow goes through is the grit process, which allows the grit to fall out. Once the grit falls out, it's separated and goes through this grit auger. The auger dries the grit, and as you can see, the grit is falling out into the dumpster. Grit many times will be composed of sand, silt, eggshells, metal shavings, small particles that fall out quickly. We remove the screenings and the grit to protect our pipes, our pumps, and our valves. Needless to say, this 12 million gallon a day pump or that 25 million gallon a day pump can be very expensive to repair if it is damaged by grit. The flow leaving the grit basins and influent pumps will wax and wane during the day depending on whether people are sleeping or if people are awake. The high flows leaving the pumps will come to this tank called a day tank. So when people are sleeping, they're not using much water and because they're not using much water, the flow coming to the plant will drop off. We may get as low as 12 million gallons of flow on the weekends during the early morning hours. However, when people go home and they're using the water at home, the increase in flow will occur in the evening. So industries that are using water during the day and homes that are using water in the evening, all of that will come to the plant and give us a peak flow sometimes around 
25 or 30 million gallons of flow value in the afternoons. So when we have that high flow, we hold a portion of it in the day tanks. When we have the low flow, we empty out the day tanks to supplement the low flow going through the plant. That way we can streamline the flow going through the plant and save energy costs. So the day tank is called the day tank because in theory it holds a portion of the flow for only one day. The next process is the primary clarifiers. In the primary clarifiers, the flow comes to the center of the tank. You'll notice the turbulent flow here coming in the center of the tank. That flow makes its way to a baffle. The baffle stills the flow. So on the inside of the baffle ring, it's turbulent. On the outside, it's very pond-like. When you get a pond-like setting with the water, the things that will settle out go to the bottom. The things that will rise up come to the top. Raw sludge goes to the bottom. Greases, oils, and soaps come to the top. So you can see some greases and oils and soaps laying on the water. That is pushed to a collector trough by the skimmer arm that's making revolutions on the top of the tank. The skimmer trough has a drain that carries those solids to a dewatering facility that is dewatered. The grease and oil that's left is put in a dumpster. So although you've seen the grease that we're able to remove in the primary clarifiers, it's still very important that we don't pour grease and oil down our pipes at home. It'll stop up the pipes. Remember, only you can can the grease. So let's revisit our beaker. This is actually what's happening in our primary clarifiers. The sludge in the clarifier settles to the bottom. We're able to pump that sludge off the bottom of the clarifier. That also goes to the digester tanks for process. What leaves the primary clarifier is this solution. And you can see that it's very clear. The primary clarifier process is about a two hour process. At the end of two hours, you have this flow leaving it. That has dissolved solids and suspended solids in the flow. Very similar to a pitcher of iced tea with dissolved sugar and the color is the suspended tea. This won't settle out, screen out, filter out, so we have to find another way to get dissolved and suspended solids out of the flow. We do that in our activated sludge basin, which is the next process. The water leaving the primary clarifiers that contains dissolved and suspended solids comes to the activated sludge basin for treatment. Here in the activated sludge basin, we use the dissolved and suspended solids as a food source for bacteria. We culture and grow bacteria here in the sludge basin. The bacteria have to have oxygen to live. You'll notice a lot of air bubbles on the tank. The air bubbles come from the bottom of the tank. As the air bubble rises up through the tank, it supplies oxygen to those living bacteria. The air bubble will also take up carbon dioxide and nitrogen gas compounds that are breathed out by the bacteria. So at the far end of the tank, we have bacteria, water, dissolved solids, and suspended solids. Here at the end of the process, we have clean water and living bacteria. So this is a sample. We're gonna take a look at our clean water. You'll say there's no way that's clean water. But what you're actually looking at is clean water and living bacteria. If you'll notice, what looks like little pellets are actually colonies of bacteria. Those colonies or communities work together to harness the dissolved and suspended solids and to take them up again as a food source for that community. So these bacteria will take out somewhere in the ballpark of seven tons of dissolved and suspended solids every day. The flow leaving the activated sludge basin goes to the final clarifier tank. 
If you notice out in the center of the final clarifier, there's a baffle ring and the flow is turbulent, very similar to the primary clarifier. The flow comes in the center, makes its way to the outside of the tank. The flow is held in the clarifiers for about two hours. And during that time, the bacteria that grows in the activated sludge basin will settle out. We'll pump off of the bottom of the clarifier and send the bacteria right straight back to the activated sludge basin to do some more work. So the water's making its way to the outer edge of the clarifier. When it gets to the edge of the clarifier, the bacteria settle out, the clear water comes to the top, and the clear water coming to the top will actually go for chlorination and disinfection before being released back to creeks, rivers, and streams. The clear water leaving the final clarifiers comes to the chlorine contact chamber and in the chlorine contact chamber we mix chlorine with the water for the purpose of disinfecting the water. So the water comes in the far end of the tank there and it makes a zigzag motion as it makes its way through the tank. The purpose of the zigzag is to be sure that the chlorine and the water stay in contact with each other. At the end of the process, we inject air to enrich the oxygen in the water. The air flows with the water to the creek so that the wildlife in the creek won't be oxygen deprived. At the end of our chlorine contact chamber, we inject sodium bisulfite, which mixes with the chlorine, dissipates the chlorine, and we have a clear water product going to the creek that is chlorine free. So this is what a flow rate of about 20 million gallons a day looks like. Right now we're flowing about 22 million gallons a day into the Salem Creek. If you look to the left, you can actually see Salem Creek flowing by the plant and you can see how silty the creek is. If you look to the right, which is downstream, you'll notice it's nowhere near as silty. That's because our clean water going into Salem Creek is actually improving water quality in the creek. So what happens to all of those solids that go to the digesters? Well, the digesters break those solids down. Those solids are very similar to fertilizer when they're broke down. It goes from there to a pelletizing facility, and that pelletizing facility dries those solids, makes the pellets very similar to fertilizer. So what we do in the wastewater industry is we take used water and unwanted waste and make a beneficial soil enrichment product and clean water.